Hi there and welcome to episode 8 of our weekly Game of Thrones YouTube show, The Last Night's Watch. This week we'll be discussing all things The Mountain and The Viper, so if you haven't seen it, go away now and come back, or uh, if you just like being spoiled, feel free to sit along and chat with us. This week I'm joined by Catherine Twyford and Rich Jordan. Um, we'll be discussing all the uh, pretty incredible stuff that just happened in that episode, which just had us screaming at our desks. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Um, and this week we're also joined by special celebrity guests, uh, Sophie Turner, who plays Sansa, Liam Cunningham, who plays Davos, and J.K. Simmons and Mads Mikkelsen, who will be telling us what they think about Game of Thrones. So, this week... Where do we even begin? <laughs> that ending, I mean, like, usually we waffle about, what's the, what the fuck moment of the week? That ending is just... Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was just, I don't know, the, it, the, the power with which he was gouging his yeah. eyes, it was just, <laughs> I can watch, it was really quite disgusting. And then that sort of melted face at the end. And, but we couldn't work out, is, is the mountain dead as well? Or is, is it just Oberyn? We, yeah. we weren't quite sure, but... Not, not to do the whole in the books thing, but Sam isn't here this week, so et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to spoil it, but they do leave it open. You don't know whether... Yeah. Well, he looked pretty dead, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He sort of slumped back down, didn't he? And yeah, but still, to have the energy to then like roll on top of someone and smush their head in like a pineapple. Yeah, yeah I mean, really. when, uh, when Oberyn was doing so well, it's like I was really rooting for him, but then you kind of knew that something was going to happen before the end. I was really disappointed though. Yeah. I felt really, I don't know, I felt a bit gutted about well, that. Yeah. yeah, it's a I great think character. Really uh, well, there's no coming back from that, <laughs> is there? I mean, for me, it was sort of the, the most shocking sort of ending to an episode since the Rain to Castamere episode, you know? Yeah. And, and I, well, I told myself I would, after that episode, I told myself I wouldn't get attached to any more characters <laughs> because every character I like dies horribly. <laughs> and then I couldn't help but, you know, like Oberyn and, and so, well, you were rooting so, yeah. for Tyrion as well, so yeah. it was like that end moment when Tywin looked so happy to sort of say that it was, you know, ah. mm. that was the end. And, but Jamie as well, I thought was really interesting. Mm. The, the emotions playing on his face were really interesting. Yeah, because you could see him, he sort of looked over at Tyrion, didn't he? And you could almost see him go, he's, he's going to do this. Mm. You know, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna Yeah, he this, felt that he know? had a real look of like, oh my God, it's going to happen, he's yeah, going to be okay. Yeah, there's almost like and a smile it, on his face. And, yeah. What, what did you think of the actual kind of choreography and the battle scenes? Again, there's so many fight scenes in Game of Thrones, but this one just felt like I saw a Reddit AMA with um, the guy who plays Oberyn the other day, and he basically said he's been learning like wushu and all these kind of different martial arts, and it, it felt like it had a different kind of feel to it. Yeah, you know? definitely. And I think um, I think that's probably because he's coming from Dawn, which is we obviously haven't been to physically in the show, and, and it's sort of exotic, and it's got you know the Spanish accents and stuff, and I think the fighting style really sort of is different to anything we've seen yeah. from anywhere else in, in Westeros. So. And it was filmed in a really amazing way as well, the sort yeah. of the angles from above and it was, I don't know, you never quite knew what was going to happen, I think, even though, like I said, I really wanted Oberyn to win and then that, that sort of it blindsided him right at the end. But yeah. I just love it because we were at our desks watching it, like probably 30 seconds. Yeah. I think I got there first. Other, yeah. And, and I was just like, just like ah! going, ah! <laughs> It was really quite, well, for the, you know, for watching it quite early in the morning, so it was really quite like, full on. There were a couple of moments actually in this episode which were a bit yeah. like that, but yeah, that bit with the sort of squashed in face and all the blood. Yeah, was that like, was, oh it no. Was, what a way to go. That was. I, I do love though that like right up until the end, his character just shone through so much. Like the passion, do you know what I mean? Just before he's going off, he's kissing her and he's just like, even the gag about all men are the same height lying down as they are standing up. Like, I think we're gonna miss that a little bit. Well, I just really, yeah. really believed in him as well. I really wanted him. Oh, he kind of reminded me a little bit of Yoda as well. You know, when he was sort of jumping and spinning and stuff, it was like Attack of the Clones all over again. You know, it's just the normal thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so do you reckon that was one of the best, you said one of the best endings of the episode since the oh, wedding? Yeah, I mean, I think probably the, the build-up was quite slow, but, but yeah, it really hit you with a, yeah, yeah, the, the last the 10 minutes. Yeah, the Beatle thing, wasn't a massive fan of the sort of 10 minute Beatle thing yeah, going that's on. that's like one part of the episode that didn't fully click with me, and all the scenes up till now with uh, Tyrion in the cell, when he's been having kind of confessionals or one-on-ones, I felt they've really kind of nailed it, and they've kind of built the tension, and it's been quite somber and, and kind of emotional, whereas this, I was just like, I just got a bit bored. I think they were trying to make Beatles. it, maybe make a point about, you know, death being futile, and that guy was sitting crushing the Beatles, and how, mm. you know, it was, it was, and also sort of the bonding between Jamie and Tyrion, but I kind of felt like we'd had that before. So, and it was a bit too long as well. 
my mind was definitely wandering yeah. in that part. You were sort of thinking, come on, let's get to the, get let's to get to the, the good bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think in an episode where it was so tight as well, every mm. single scene was doing something or kind of there was something quite groundbreaking. Um, before we go on to that stuff, uh, so talking of epic, disgusting, amazing death scenes, uh, this week we spoke to uh, Sophie Turner, who plays Sansa mm. on the red carpet, and we asked her what she would want to see in a Game of Thrones movie, and it includes a horrific death scene. I want a good death scene. Or I want like a coronation scene. But not at the moment. We'll leave that till the very end because she has to be the one sitting on the throne at the end. Um, so a good death scene would be fun. How do you want to go? I don't know. I want a really dramatic one um, where it lasts like the whole episode. If it was like a stabbing, I'd be like, oh, oh, oh no, I feel, oh. That kind of thing for a whole episode. Brilliant. Get better, get worse, die. So that was Santa there saying that if she wanted a Game of Thrones movie, she wants to go out in a prolonged, graphic, gory death. Oh, she is, wants to, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, there was some pretty interesting stuff with her and Baelish up at the Eerie this definitely, week. Yeah, it was definitely. I, th I think you're starting, you know, Santa for me for the first few seasons was a bit of a you know, sort of... Wet blanket. Yeah, a bit of a drip, <laughs> to be honest. But, you know, this this season, she's sort of coming into herself a bit. And this was really the episode where I sort of thought some of Baelish's traits are sort of rubbing off on her and she's sort of <laughs> learning to... Well, yeah, <laughs> As it I mean, I think he, but. he plays that, Aidan Gillen plays that really well. He does a very good line and sort of creepy and yet kind of sexy. <laughs> I've always thought he was quite sexy. But um, he, even when he was in the Queer as Folk, we used to love him, me and yeah, my yeah. friends. But he, he just, he has a very, the way he acts conveys the sort of, I don't know, it's, it's creepy and yet it's charming and yet it's, it's sexy. He's kind of incestual in a way. Like yeah. He's in love with her mum and he's yeah. kind of hitting on her. Yeah. And he's, he's sort of old enough to be a dad as well. So. But when she came out at the end and she dressed herself in the sort of... She looked good in yeah, that. Yeah, and she had a look on her face which sort of, conveyed confidence like she was ready to sort of take on whatever was going to happen and that she was ready to you know they had that scene where she looked he asked what she thought he wanted and she looked up at him and it was almost like there was an unspoken thing of what was going to happen and it's like she's sort of turning into a mother basically isn't she she's becoming more and more like i definitely felt that when she was walking down the stairs at the end in that dress i definitely she felt older, she had like didn't she? she looked older and she sort of had a bit more she wasn't so timid and you know she had a bit more of Catelyn's sort of swagger about her I guess. I think she's going to end up being more manipulative than Catelyn though just because I mean like that scene with the lords and ladies of the Vale oh, yeah, and she, she sells it. Well, she was a brilliant scene but like the depressing mm. thing is 90% of what she said was the truth yeah. like all that crap she went through so she the manipulation was just quite slight but it was enough to just sell it. But that, that's what I mean when um, when I said that she's learning from him because I really felt like that was he was almost sort of you could see when she looked at him and he looked at her yeah, and he was almost was, going, oh yeah. That was a great like, moment. You know, that was a really good scene, I thought. Do you think she's doing, because Arya is kind of, she's getting keeping her enemies closer, do you know what I mean? And you feel as though she's going to try and turn the screw and she'll get close to people and then she'll basically knife yeah, them in yeah. the back. Do you think Sansa's doing that as well or do you reckon she's being wooed to the dark I think side? she's learning how to do that, yeah. definitely. But you know, Arya's now turned up. At the, <laughs> uh, and, and you know they're going to have a near miss, don't you? You know they're not going to see each other, or they're never going to know that they're like just near each other. It's it's going to be another one of those frustrating moments, I think. I just loved it though that it was even her reaction to it. It was kind of reflecting the audience because there've been so many moments now where kind of all the Starks have got so close, and then uh, and her just going. <laughs> it kind of felt like we felt. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You're just so. But didn't you think the Hound as well looked almost not happy, but kind of. Like he, he knew then that they were probably going to spend some more time together or that like maybe the journey wasn't over, I don't know. I th but what's going to happen with them now? Because that's the thing, you, you say that like he enjoys it, but now if that's technically it for those two and he doesn't have to deliver her anywhere else, what's going to happen with them? Is he just going to kill her? Is he going to set her run free? Are they going to lope? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the age gap might be slightly too much there. <laughs> Game of Thrones, though. <laughs> Anything goes. Um, I think talking about uh, kind of manipulative uh, scenes and betrayal and all that kind of stuff, another big moment was Daenerys and Mormon. Uh, did, again, not doing the whole, oh, I read the books, but I saw that coming. Did you guys see that coming, that betrayal? Because he's been with her from the beginning, pretty much. I thought there might have been some because you know all this time Varys has been in King's Landing saying I've, I've been hearing things from from afar and stuff and and someone had to be doing that um, so I th 
I thought someone would be doing that, but I never thought it would be him. I but didn't, didn't they mention a couple of episodes again about how he'd been spying on her or something? I'm sure Varys said something in one of the episodes. So it was almost like they, that's, they saw their way in to split them up because they were talking mm. about how she had um, people protecting her who were really powerful. So they're obviously trying to remove those people, aren't they? So I, I saw it as like the first, they're probably going to try and get rid of... Um, the other sir as well, I can't remember his name, Barriston. Oh yeah. They're the probably going to try and get rid of him as well because they, they, when they were talking about her having dragons, they also were listing all the people who were protecting her. So I saw it as a way of like picking them off. So they're just trying to find a way to get rid of them. So even though he hasn't betrayed her for a long time, it, it, it was for enough her, for her. Like, yeah, yeah. And she played that really well, I think. She, did, she was yeah. amazing. Like yes. really powerful. Performance. There's so many layers to it as well because she knows that he's in love with her and all this kind of stuff and it's, I mean, it's just so sad him kind of on his horse trotting away. Mm. I thought her performance was great because she, you know, she was obviously very hurt by it and, you know, he was sort of her closest ally and, and, you know, all this and they've been through so much together but she didn't let that facade drop even, even though you could tell, you know, that she was really, really hurt and betrayed. She, she kept that sort of new queenly sort of facade up, you know. But it was interesting um, that it went to Sir Barristan first instead of straight to her. Well, it was in the books. Uh, <laughs> in the books. <laughs> um, basically, Selmy or Barristan ends up outing Jorah before this, so before they do the attack on Marine. And then Daenerys is basically like, I'm sending you off on like a suicide mission. And then he comes back mm. alive and she's like, now get out of my sight. Uh, so it was quite interesting that they played it in the way mm. that Barristan do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. he still had a hand in his downfall then, but you know they didn't kill him, so it doesn't mean no. he still could be a player somewhere else now. He's probably going to go back to King's Landing or well, somewhere. They take him? Do you know what I mean? It's like well, maybe he'll become a player in a different part of it now. I don't know. I mean, we haven't heard anything from Stannis for a while. No. I mean, that was arguably, I would say, the most boring part of it <laughs> is Stannis and all that weird stuff. But they're obviously making a move. One person I always wonder about, what happened to Robert Baratheon's son? Oh, what, he's yeah. illegitimate. Yeah. yeah, where did he go? I can't even remember. Did he escape from...? He did, because he was captured by Melisandre. Yeah, he? and but then he the escaped, whole leeches didn't thing. Yeah. Didn't he escape? I think he did so he right, must then. be coming back into this at some point as well. There's so many different people, you kind of lose track of yeah. it, don't you? I think as well you said that um, kind of he was, uh, Jorah was duplicitous kind of in the past, but even that scene with Ian Sully, which was really interesting with Grey Worm, um, kind of with him basically, uh, his sexual awakening in a way, um, but when they're having that conversation and he says like, I learned that word from Jorah. So Jorah's also been doing stuff on the side as well. Would you reckon he's kind of, do you know what I mean? Like he's been yeah, he's doing. He's definitely a shady the, character, isn't he? And she's been trusting him, and I think perhaps Barristan hasn't been so trusting of him, and and it's now all coming out. But I don't know. It's going to be an interesting. Let's we'll see how that one plays out. I think. I think uh, talking of Amelia Clark, though, uh, I was in Cannes the other week, as you do, uh, and got chatting to uh, J.K. Simmons, who is there promoting his absolutely brilliant film Whiplash, which is incredible. Um, and he's obviously just been cast in Terminator Genesis, which Amelia Clark is also going to be in. Uh, so it seemed like a natural fit to ask him whether he watches Game of Thrones. I don't watch the show. I am a fan of the show. My, my wife and I, uh, I don't know, several months ago, you know, the last people in the civilized world to, to, uh, to finally go, oh yeah, maybe we should watch this. Everybody says it's the best thing since sliced bread. And, um, and we were uh, at a rare opportunity, you know, home alone at night to, with the, you know, time on our hands and we weren't falling asleep uh, to actually watch. And, we, and we, we, there was an episode that was airing, you know, and we turned it on and watched it and watched the entire episode. And we're like, this is awesome. This is so well done, the, you know, the acting, the, you know, everything. Such a, I have no idea what's going on. No clue who had any, you know, and, uh, and realizing, yeah, this is, this is not something you can jump on board in the middle of. So, uh, you know, at some point we need to do the, uh, you know, the marathon thing and start with episode one, season one, and, uh, and catch up with the rest of the civilized world and enjoy it. And, I, and I'm embarrassed to be working with Amelia soon not having seen the show, but, but I am a fan, but I don't really know what I'm a fan of.
that's what J.K. Simmons thought. Uh, and while we're on the subject, while I was also at Cannes, I spoke to Mads Mikkelsen uh, for his new Western film, The Salvation, which is also very good. Um, and I asked him what he thought about Game of Thrones, and he had a pretty uh, close to home answer. I don't watch the show, but I love it because my very good friend Nikolai Costavaldo is in it, and he's again his career is going ballistic because of that show as well. Uh, and so uh, we are all very proud of what he's doing there. And I, one day I will watch it, but I don't have any time. Would you ever be up for a cameo? Cameo, anyway, yeah, if I can kill him. Oh, you know what? He can kill me. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I'll do a cameo. So yeah, see Mads Mikkelsen in Game of Thrones, that would work. And he wants amazing. to kill Jamie that, Lannister. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> I'd love to see that. That is a fight scene I would like yeah, to see. Yeah, definitely. It. He would just pop up for 10 minutes, have a bit of a fight scene, kill him and then wander off again. Um, so other stuff going on this week, we had all the major stuff back at the wall. Um, and with the town being overrun at the yeah. beginning um, and that kind of wonderful moment, well, other than the burping the songs, yeah, which yeah. was just Weird. lovely. <laughs> uh, I just, I love the Egret moment where, you know, she's still badass and she's slitting throats all over the place. But then when it comes to actually seeing the baby and having a bit of humanity, do you know what I mean? She's still kind of there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was quite a, a good moment. But you kind of, I kind of knew that they weren't going to kill off Gilly and the baby because it seems like there's some they might be playing a bigger role in something later on. I don't know, obviously, but um, you know, that that's obviously a taste of things to come at the wall. We kind of feel like they're building up to yeah. perhaps, because this is episode eight, so it's always episode nine where you get the big moment, even though that was a pretty big moment yeah. in eight, but so perhaps number nine is going to be at the wall and finally we're going to have something happen because they've been talking about it a lot. All and it's like, let's have something just happen. Down the I think wall, it's, for me, this episode, really felt like a foreshadowing of what was going to happen you know they're sort of what happened in the camp and then back at the the wall and their discussion and stuff it really felt like they were foreshadowing a, a big battle sequence and I know that obviously Neil Marshall is directing the next episode and yeah. the last oh, episode he directed he? was oh, the right. Battle of Blackwater yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know obviously I think it's safe to say that next week we're going to get a huge, huge battle episode. But I think we wall. need that. There needs to be some action at the wall because something has to happen with the White Walkers and all yeah. that, the supernatural stuff. But mm. we also, they, they need to, that needs to move forward a bit, I think, now because it, it's maybe the whole time we're going through it's been on, it's this, this threat and it's never mm. actually happened. So it kind of be good to see that happen, I think, or for something to. It's interesting because in the books, um, that kind of that uh, village ambush at the beginning uh, doesn't actually happen. Jon Snow more or less goes down there and goes, you're all going to die, come back to us. And they all more or less go to the wall oh, and they okay. bunker down. So I think it was a really interesting way of ramping up the tension and going, they're getting closer and they're violent and they're vicious. And like you say, again, I have a very strong feeling next week will just be a full on attack at the wall and that's just going to be the whole thing. And I'm kind of ready for that. Yeah, yeah I think, every, yeah. I think it. And Jon Snow needs, is obviously, well, hopefully, I think, going to come out as some kind of leader or hero from this. And he needs to take that role now, I think. And because there's obviously going to be then something with, um, Roose Bolton isn't there because yeah. he's then yeah. you know the creepy old Ramsey Snow getting his getting his way in the end and all that kind getting of getting his title yeah and you kind of feel like they're not long for well I hope because they're quite evil but you <laughs> yeah. know they're not long for that situation because hopefully Jon Snow's going to come back and do to, something he needs to survive big grip first yeah but yeah. then I think that's that that scene with the baby was quite yeah. interesting because I think that sort of showed that she's not completely you know, as heartless as some of the other worldlings, you know, she's, that there is a sort of yeah, something in her that yeah. could maybe persuade her otherwise. Yeah, or, or that's she, or, gonna be interesting. You know, make her doubt if she's about to strike the killing blow or something, you know, she might have that second of doubt or something. And if she comes know. face to face with Jon Snow again, I don't think she'd be able to kill him. She want to kiss him and then kill him. Yeah. yeah. And then kill him. That'd be good. Um, I think you mentioned Bolton. That was kind of the other big thing in the episode, I suppose. God, that scene with the uh, kind of Flayed. him trying to be Theon again. Oh, and at yeah. first you're like, he's just reading lines and then he starts to break down when he's challenged mm. and he was just like... Mm. Yeah. I thought he, he's, his acting is really good, actually. At the start he was a bit... I don't know, it was like, oh, it's Lily Allen's brother and everything. But, <laughs> but now it, I think he's really good, actually. He plays that really well. He's definitely getting better and that's quite a, a tough thing to nail as well, do you know what I mean? Because you're playing so many levels of being two people and having a mental breakdown and yeah. 
and that bit when the man got the sort of axe into the head yeah. and then it was Candy like man. And, then, uh, and I actually had to rewind it just to check you know when the, it was saying to the man oh yeah we'll set you free and then it swapped to the man's head of the flayed body which was quite gross and yeah, I, was, I had yeah. to take it back just to check it was the same person and that was disgusting I was yeah. like yeah. Oh. that was quite a good prop though yeah, yeah it was, <laughs> it's been ages painting the blood <laughs> Do you think, though, that kind of a uh, Reek or Theon, do you think that he's starting to re-adopt his personality? Or do you reckon he's still just broken and he's just... I don't know, it's sort of... I think I, he I, might be broken. I think that's the one storyline, because obviously I haven't read the books, and I think that's, that's the one storyline where I really don't know where it's going. Like, I just cannot see where that is going. You know, I, hope where... he, I hope he rediscovers himself. Hopefully, if something does happen with the Bolton, and you know, um, maybe Jon if Jon Snow comes and uh, finds Theon Greyjoy like that, uh, there's going to be some way of rescuing him from that weird sort of mental state he seems to be mm -hmm. in. But it, because when that that time when his sister tried to save him and he wouldn't let her, that was quite a sort of turning yeah. point for it, I think. So all in all, a pretty gory, action-packed, amazing episode. It's a great episode. Yeah. It was, yeah, pretty good. I, but I think. Last week's was probably more consistent for me, but this this had more sort of oh my god moments, you know. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Oh um, my god! <laughs> Internet speak. Yeah. Yay. Um, so that kind of uh, wraps up the episode more or less. Before we go, we have one more Game of Thrones talking head, and this is from Liam Cunningham, who plays Sir Davos, who we haven't heard from in a while. Um, and he told us what programme he would like Game of Thrones to cross over with. I did like Walter White sitting on I've seen a couple of t-shirts with Walter sitting on the, on the throne. I thought that was kind of, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Game of Heisenberg. I don't know, something like that. Who would he be dealing meth to, do you think? <laughs> well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? He would be, uh, he would be like uh, one of those, uh, like Paisal, he would be a grand meister. He'd be down making wildfire and <laughs> crystal meth <laughs> in the basements of King's Landing. <laughs> So that's it for this week. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, Catherine and Rich. Uh, feel free to let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, we'll try and reference them in next week's episode and reply to everyone that we can. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of this amazing waffling. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for uh, chatting with us. And remember, no spoilers in the comments for people who have not read the books. Cool, thank you very much.